looking to add a new dimension to your artwork, today I'm going to try one of my latest obsessions on my paintings, a gel plate. Hi there, I'm Janine, I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. You might have seen some of my recent experiments with my gel plate. I've been a little obsessed with the effects that you can create with it, and especially that you never quite know what result you're going to get. Those happy accidents are one of my favourite painting moments. I've only really used my jelly plate with paper before, so today I want to try and use it on some small wood panels that are part of my series that I'm working on. I'm going to use my gel plate on these smaller kind of paintings that I've started and I got out my pre-mixed colours. You can watch a video where I've mixed that colour palette. I'll link it up here and in the description box below. And I've got no real plan. I just want to experiment with the gel plate. You notice that my plate isn't super clean. I'm not too bothered about cleaning it properly every time because I think it just adds to the character of the painting. Now first, let's start with this one. I do already like all the marks that are happening on here, but it's only early layers, so I don't want to be too precious about them. I think I'll just start off with maybe two colours on here. So maybe the blue and also maybe add a little bit of this um, darker blue. And then I always really like using the brayer. So it gives these really nice, smooth effects. And obviously the plate is a little bit bigger than my paintings. I've never actually tried the gel plate on my wood panels, so this is a first. And I'm also not sure if it's better to put the painting on the gel plate like I've done now, or to put the gel plate on top of the painting. But let's start this way and then we'll see. It's quite interesting. It already had a lot of texture here from the brush marks before, so I think that added to this. Next I've got this one, so I might just leave what I've got here and add a bit of the yellow. And again go over with the grayer. And I'm just checking, I quite like this corner, so I might put that down here where it's not as much paint. And I know that if you're doing proper monoprinting, you're supposed to leave this on for quite a long time to dry. But I do not have the patience for that, and I don't really mind if it picks up all the colour or not. Probably not as successful. I'll just do it again, a bit further down, or maybe on a slight angle. Not great. I love this here. I just love the generous areas. I might add some of this reddish colour and I think I'll do this one quite smoothly, fairly smoothly, compared to what we did before. And then I want to scratch into it a little bit, maybe with this colour shaper. I should put the plate the other way around because it might pick up more of the paint when the plate bends. It's actually quite similar colours to what's already on here. And I might try and only get this bottom half on here. I did say I wanted to try it the other way around, didn't I? Maybe if I like bend it like this. Quite like this here. I just try printing that on top. I do like how you can see a preview here, but it usually looks nothing like this. Mm, I don't know if that is any better. But I do like what it did on here. I'll take some of this off just with some standard copy paper then have maybe a little bit more of a cleaner surface. And get a bonus print. 
This one is next. This doesn't have much on here yet, so I might be a bit more experimental. I think I will do this quite smoothly. And then scratch into it a little bit. When you're scratching into the jelly plate, always make sure you're using something quite soft. Like this is a silicon nib. So otherwise you might destroy your plate if you use something like a metal palette knife. Right, let's try it the other way around again. It's a little bit more difficult to align this way. I very much like the yellow with the purple here. Complementary colours. Now for this one, I might um, try painting on the plate. I'll leave these marks here and maybe use some of this light colour. Didn't do very much. Might try that again. Um, some yellow. I love this one here actually, but it's probably going to disappear. I'll just use, mm. yeah, I'll just use what I've got on here and see what happens there. Not much. I think I want to try and do one on an angle. Also, maybe mix some of the colours, some of the blue and some of the um, maybe this colour down here. Tip the yellow to turn it into quite a neutral colour and maybe lighten it as well. What if I just use this, um, what do you call it, catalyst blade instead of the brayer. This is quite a thick layer now. And I want to get kind of a harsh edge on here. Let's see if that works. Quite interesting actually what happened here. I think I want to try that on the one I just did earlier. But maybe not as um, much on an angle. A bit more straight. Not too pleased with that. And I have one more that doesn't have a layer on it yet. To add a little bit of the light colour and then use the brayer again. When we get to the top, see the sky never stops. Maybe even add a few dots of this, which you probably won't see because this will be underneath that layer. There's a world you can find when you think you're alone, when you're lost in your mind, and you shape any kind for the next one. Oh, you definitely see the dots. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Let's maybe mix these in a little bit. What's here? A little bit of light colour again. Maybe even add a bit of blue here. I use that in this one. Hmm, there's quite a bit of interesting texture here. Now let's see if I can kind of scrape that. Probably not. Actually, if it's sort of dry already and you use the brayer which is also kind of dry then it picks up quite a lot of the paint maybe it wasn't very dry yet this is now just a haze I'm going to add some yellow over that mix some of this red into it put that on this one And then I want to do one that's mainly light colour. Even add some white. Always steady, I'll use the brayer again for that. I think you can just call it a roller. I'll just do a solid layer onto 
this one here. And I'm assuming it won't be solid when I pick it up. Why can you now actually, while it's wet, scratch into here a little bit? I really like these bits here that have stayed. I can even um, sand that once it's dry. I do really like that. I might do that on another one. Maybe add a little bit of stuck into it. It's a change in all I'll do it on this one, which I'm not very keen on yet. Hmm, there's a little bit of yellow. I think that was still on the board. Oh, I very much like what's going on here. This area. I'll do one more where I cover a lot, but I think I want, I want to take some of this off. I might leave this for a couple of minutes even. I had a couple of minutes to sit. And you see, it takes up much more of the paint when you leave it for a little bit. That's beautiful, I love that. Now I want to just do some areas, like maybe something like this. And I'll put that on this one. Lovely. And I'll leave that on here and then maybe do one side, a bit lighter. not actually what I wanted to do, but let's try and scrape some of that off into a thinner layer. I think I want to do one more light layer, maybe slightly blue. I'll mix it straight with some white touch of the yellow. Actually, I've got yellow on here already. Let's do a bit more. And then some blue. I'm not spread it too evenly. I'll do it on here and I'll do it slightly offset again. It was like the little blobs it, le uh, it leaves. And I've got this edge here. Let's see if I can scrape some mm. get these effects here quite like that maybe i'll do it up here as well and you've got some of these yellow bits again shining through and this one is still my least favorite one there's something i liked about this i thought not sure maybe this here actually so i'll cover this bit also with that and possibly even leave it for a minute so you can pick up some more. I think that's been about a minute. I think it's just a bit too bitty. What if I do what I did on the other one? Actually, this has got paint on it, so I'm just scraping it on there, but I don't quite like that. It does need the difference of a bit of a more solid area, a bit of a contrast. Just scraping that on here. That's better. It's quite nice actually now. And this I think is beautiful as well. I will take a print of that. I've just thought of one more thing. This one here. I'm going to roll the brayer off here. Just see what that does. Maybe, maybe actually on the side. There's still quite a lot of paint on here. Oh, I think what happened there. Even this freer. Um, look at this. It looks like a knot of a, in a piece of wood. Hmm, that's much better. I'm much happier with that. And I'm sure you wanted to see how this turned out.
I really love some of the effects I got with the gel plate and others not so much. But that's the beauty of using a gel plate in the way that I do. You never quite know what you're going to get. In the next layers, I'll want to clean up some of these marks and eliminate the bits that I'm not happy with, but we'll leave that for another time. What surfaces have you tried your gel plate on? Is there something you want to try but haven't yet with your gel plate? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to see some more jelly plate action, I created a whole playlist of my jelly plate videos. You can watch it up here. Thanks and bye bye.